Here we go with Gonzaga Nation SI on the Gonzaga Nation Media Network. Episode one in the new year of 2023. Uh, Adam, happy Happy New Year's. Yeah, happy New Year. How did, how did you ring in New Year's? Because uh, I flew in late from a broadcast uh, in Logan, Utah, spent it with the family. You called the radio game for Gonzaga Pepperdine. Anything interesting on your end? Uh, I was in bed by 1030. Uh, I was with the kids and... Yeah, I don't do much on New Year's, so it's just another day for me. I'm one of those guys. No lighting of fireworks because uh, our neighborhood was going crazy with fireworks. Yeah, no, I'm a I'm an anti firework guy too. I'm one of those guys as well, um, especially on the Fourth of July. So I I I stick to my guns when it comes to uh, no fireworks. Yeah, I, I'm torn on the fireworks because they're fun. My kids like them. But I, then I, at the end of, of lighting them off, I'm like, God dang, that was $30 that I just literally lit on fire. Um, you did, you grew up a little bit in Wyoming. A couple of years back on a, on a family vacation, we bought some unbelievable fireworks uh, <laughs> at, at one of the fireworks stands there. Oh, yeah. Uh, the M80s and, the, you know, all those things are, I'm sure, available down in that free state of uh, Wyoming. So, um yeah, I just I'm not a big fan of fireworks. Too many bad things can happen. Yeah. You know, before we get on topic with Gonzaga basketball, uh, want to ask you about living in Wyoming. Um, I've been first off, I always hated that state because my senior year we lost to Wyoming in the NCAA tournament. But since I've been able to go back, I've kind of had a couple drive vacations with the family through the state. I've called some games in Laramie, so I'm starting to get an affinity for the state. Um, we went to the rodeo uh, in Cody, and it was unbelievable. Are you a are you a, a rodeo guy, or what? What are your memories of Wyoming? Uh, I just remember it being cold and dark and very uh, windy. Is my memories of Wyoming. Um, I got family there. It's not a bad state, um, but I'm glad I live somewhere with mountains and uh, trees and lakes and and things of that nature. So, yeah. <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe someday, uh, you know, you'll get to that Cody Wyoming rodeo, and it's uh, it's pretty impressive. So, back back to the topic at hand: Gonzaga basketball. Um, you know, we we missed a week or two just because it was sandwiched around Christmas time, and and we needed a little bit of a break, but. Gonzaga players needed a break. They came back after the break and set a record for margin of victory. 78-point win against a non-Division I Eastern Oregon team. I know there's not a lot to take out of that win other than everybody performed, but what were your thoughts on that game? Well, I mean, it it was a weird timing for the game. Um, normally, that type of opponent would be a preseason type of game. Um we took five days off before Christmas or during Christmas and coach few didn't want to go to 10 uh, going into league. So he had to schedule a game. And then what the issue was that there was most of the leagues are starting around Christmas time or after. So you couldn't get an Eastern, you couldn't get a, um, a Wazoo. They've already started pac 12. You couldn't get an Idaho. You couldn't get an Idaho state, you know, all these teams in the big, uh, or excuse me, the big sky. So he had to kind of schedule a game to get a tune-up coming back from Christmas break. So I know it was a weird timing. It was good in the sense that guys got developmental minutes. There hasn't been a lot of those this year. You know, normally in the past probably five years, we've had a lot of blowouts and there's been opportunities for guys to play sometimes five to 10 meaningful minutes, you know, where it was not just at the end of the game with two minutes to go. Um, so there was some value in that. I mean, Efton Reed, had a good game. It was eight for eight. Dominic Harris got a long run. Everybody scored who, who got on the floor. So that stuff is always good for practice players and guys that like Efton and Dom, if there's an injury or there's a weird matchup that you still want to keep their confidence up and stay sharp. Um, but it was weird winning by 70 something. I mean, that that's just those are hard games to play in as a player hard to coach in. Um, you don't want to rub your nose in anybody, you know, but also you want your guys to go out and play. Um, so it was interesting, but I was glad that uh, some of the guys got a lot of run. Yeah. I remember my senior year, we actually played Eastern Oregon. I didn't play in the game. Um, you know, I was nursing a small injury, but we won that game by 50. Do you remember 
any of those games in your career, um, non do ones or or just absolute blowouts that you knew? Uh, about? Yeah, we didn't play as many um, those type of games. I guess none that comes to mind. Those are the games that I don't know. You try to get as many points as you can as quickly as you can because you know you're probably not going to play much in the second half. Um, so yeah, it, it's just it just was interesting because, like I said, the timing. There were some people that were upset. Um, well, why are we playing them at this? Um, but it made sense if you talk about the rest of the, you know, yeah. other conferences league starting and nobody wants to go play Gonzaga right before they start league, um, which, you know, if you're gearing up to go try to make an NCAA tournament run, um, why go play a, a powerhouse for no reason? So um, it was just interesting. The margin of victory thing, I, I, I leave it at. I think it's still 61 against a division one opponent. I think the field goal record shouldn't count. Um, you know, that's just me because it doesn't make sense to do it against an NAIA team. Um, but nonetheless, we appreciate them coming up and playing us. It definitely got the many guys right leading into WCC play. And I think Gonzaga looked really good against Pepperdine uh, offensively. They are a juggernaut again, top five in efficiency. Their numbers are starting to creep up. Defense is still a work in progress, but we kind of knew that without the rim protection of Chet Holmgren from a season ago. Um, but I was impressed with just the attention to detail. When I watched the game on TV later, I was attention to the, the attention to detail. I think the spacing's getting better. I think the timing's getting better. And that's creating just uh, loads of space for Drew Timmy, because nobody can stop him right now. Yeah, he's uh, had a fantastic season, fantastic career. Uh, he's close. I think he's like 250 or 300 points away from the all-time record. I think he's on pace to break it. If, you know, we play 16 more games or something like that, he's got to average about what he's averaging now at 22. Um, so, yeah, that, that Pepperdine game was fantastic as far as scoring the basketball. I think defensively we're, we're okay. Um, it's hard to replace rim protection. I think on the perimeter, we're a lot better than we were at the start of the season. There was an issue, um, especially like the Texas Purdue game with ball screen coverages were messed up, you know, switching at uh, times to switch like, uh, you know, like on like. Um, so for the most part, I, I like where we're at going into conference play. This conference is, uh, you know, much deeper than it has been in the past. Not as many top tier teams, but the meat of the league is better, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so there's going to be closer games, but it, it was a great way to start. I'm just, uh, I want to get your thoughts on this. Like, how can we get the first bye weekend when we won the <laughs> league last year? It's like, God bless the West Coast Conference, but we always kind of get shafted on some some way or some form when we won the league last year. So it was just weird having the, the first week be our bye weekend. Yeah, I, I agree with that being weird. I know it had Pepperdine had to be a buy on the front end because they played in the Hawaii tournament. So they played on Christmas day. So the league wasn't going to have them start on the 28th or 29th, like a lot of the other games. Um, but yeah, you, you would think based on the fact that Gonzaga has carried the league uh, production wise, financial wise, <laughs> reputation wise for some time, you would think they would throw them a benefit and a bonus at some point, just hey, we'll make it easy on you a little bit here. Not that they're going to make it easy, but just, uh, you know, schedule-wise and, and make it a, easier for people, I guess, really. Yeah, um, just having the, the bye week, the first week, makes it seem like you only have one then the rest of the year, obviously. So it, it was a little bit uh, perplexing, um, but it makes sense now hearing about the Pepperdine plan and that, you know, Christmas turn. I didn't put, you know, two and two together, but also um, – you know, like I said, it's funny. It's like, you know, we battled with them for the tournaments, you know, back in the day when we were playing. And then Fuey finally got his way and we had a conference tournament there. And then we finally battled with we shouldn't have to play three conference games. You know what I mean? So it's like it's always a battle. And like you said, we've done a lot for that conference. So it's interesting, um, to say the least. Yeah. You know, I, the one thing I, I do know is uh, getting away from having to play three games in the conference tournament. If you are a top seed, it definitely benefits your net and your RPI, even though that's not as important anymore, your quad one and two opportunities. So it, it does help um, in regards to that. And I know it lessens the amount of time that coach few and the team have to be down in Vegas too. I mean, before it would have been, you know, a four or five day stretch. Now 
it's almost like a normal weekend during the season go down and it's about a three and a half, four day road trip is all. Yeah, no, I think it was the right thing to do for the league. It's the fair thing to do. If you, you know, you get a, you win the league or you get in second place, you get a first round bye. That's what most leagues do. And so I think they wised up and uh, did the right thing. Hey, before we wrap up this episode, uh, I want your take on Mac. Maxwell Lewis of Pepperdine. You, I love the way you see the game, especially from that wing perspective. Uh, I've made a comment the other day uh, that I thought Maxwell Lewis was the best NBA prospect in this league. And I had some people ask me if I, if I was serious about that. And I was, and then he goes out and he looked unbelievably good. At Gonzaga. He had some foul trouble, but uh, he seemed to have his way at times. What were your th- thoughts on Matt Lewis? Um, and is he like Jalen Williams of Santa Clara a season ago where not a lot of people know about him, but then all of a sudden he's going to be a mid first round pick. Yeah, I totally agree. I was highly impressed with him. He has kind of a weird backstory. Took a year off uh, from high school, from prep school and just went and worked out for a season and then kind of had it up and down year last year with injuries. Um, but he looks the part six, eight, six, seven, six, eight, long wingspan, athletic body, um, Big hands, shot it really good from three. Shake was excellent. Um, had a hop around the rim. I mean, it was quick twitch, you know, all the things that you kind of have to check off at that wing position, which is kind of the the go-to position now, you know, in the NBA's, you know, big, long athletic wings that can score is what the league is now. And so um, I was super impressed. I thought he was the best player on the floor besides Drew. But as far as NBA prospect, he was the best player on the floor without question. I was upset that he got in foul trouble, to be frank. In that first half, I wanted to watch him more. But he ended up with 20 and only – I think he played 21 minutes. Um, Extremely efficient. I think he was 9 to 14. The only knock was he had five turnovers. But sometimes I give, you know, guys a little bit of break on that. If they're handling the ball or trying to consistently have to make plays, you can live with some turnovers. Um, But he definitely looks like – a you know, 10 to 25, you know, pick in the league. I mean, fantastic player. I think you're exactly right. I think he's the best prospect, um, you know, that uh, is playing in the West Coast Conference for sure. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you backing up my initial thoughts because uh, I had some Gonzaga fans question me on that one. I was like, hey, I pull for Gonzaga. I want all the guys that have success, but I also see it from a lens of, What I see in front of me is a clear-cut NBA player. So, Mo, it was great to have you join on this episode. We'll be back again for another episode later this week where we chat a little bit about the WCC and what's upcoming for Gonzaga.